teaching fellow on this course, and a lot of work is also done by Dr. Emmett Dunham, who is the course coordinator. So on behalf of her and uh, whatever we have done on this course, I would like to share some of those things with all of you, all right? So before I start, let's have a quick look at what exactly this course is. And for that, there's a little video. Let's listen to this video. I mean, of course, you'll be listening to me again, but there we go. The aim of this video is to give you an overview of Population Health 302. This is a core course that Bachelor in Health Science students take during their final year of study. The placement is normally one of the four courses in which students are enrolled per semester. The duration of the semester is 12 teaching weeks and a two-week mid-semester break. As a guideline, the total study load per course is 120 hours. In the case of Community Health Placement course, 60 hours will be spent engaged in the work of the organization assigned, and the remaining 60 hours will be spent on personal learning associated with the placement. The purpose of the placement is to enable students to develop the competencies they will require for future employment in the health sector. Our graduates are employed in broad range of roles, including health policy analysis, health management, health information, and health promotion. The placement benefits both students and organizations by contributing to the work readiness of our graduates. So what exactly will students do? The placement will involve each student, individually <coughs> or with peers, working in the host organization. Students are expected to gain a critical understanding of the host organization. And this is achieved through activities such as uh, carrying out assigned work, observation, shadowing staff members to gain an understanding of what they do, sitting on meetings, asking questions, and having discussions with staff members. The placement gives students the opportunity to gain knowledge and skills reflecting the graduate profile for the Bachelors in Health Sciences, in particular related to general intellectual skills and capacities and personal qualities and professional integrity. All right, so this gives you a brief overview of what this particular course is all about. And uh, another thing, so in the year 2015, this course was an optional paper, and it would be offered only once a year. And it would be offered to only a certain number of students with really high GPA. However, that changed from 2016 onwards. It became the core capstone paper, which means there were few changes. First thing, instead of being offered once a year, it was offered twice a year on both the semesters. Second, of course, it was offered to everybody. So scale changed drastically. In 2015, we had around 30, 32 students to almost roughly now anywhere from 100 to 140 students a year. All right? And uh, here you can see the, the SET evaluation. I very clearly remember uh, going to Bridget's office uh, in her previous job and, uh, you know, as a red flag course, that because our course wasn't doing really good compared to the academic unit or the faculty or the university. And uh, we, we planned a series of changes as a result of you know, the scale and other bits and pieces because one of the main things ab about this course is it involves placement. So you need to work with external organizations. So we work with around 75 plus different health placement organizations across Auckland. So there are more chances of things going wrong. You not only have to address students' need, but also you need to address the needs of the placement supervisors. And you have to watch what's happening between you know, those two parties. So yeah, so let's see what, what, what sort of changes we did. We did a series of changes, and today I'll be focusing just on assessments, all right? I very strongly believe that education sector has three key players. We have students, the learners, we have university, the education providers, and we have the community. I think community is extremely, extremely important in the education of students because at the heart of everything lies the learning, the student learning. So what I want to do now is I want to give you literally 20 seconds to talk to a person sitting next to you and share your views about how these communities and these key stakeholders are significant for student learning. Start. <laughs>
All right. In the interest of time, let's come back. Now, I would want a few of you to shout out a few things you discussed. Is there anyone from this side want to share anything at all what you discussed? Anyone at all this side? Yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. Anyone from this side? Absolutely. Yes, they are. Anyone from this side? Five people sitting there? Any thought? Anything at all? I'm not going to go further unless I hear something from you guys. So just wait, yeah. What are your thoughts on what, what can be the role of community? Do you think they're important at all? They're not important? Do you think they're important? Relationship. Absolutely. Do you think it's a two-way relationship? OK, great. Now, I think what happens is um, there are a lot of things which are missing in our classroom teaching. We can't really teach them a lot of things in the classroom. There are gaps. These gaps can be fulfilled if we involve community. And we all talk about transferable skills. You know, this morning we all spoke about what exa exactly employers want from our graduates. You know, things like verbal communication skills, work ethic, energy and enthusiasm. A lot of these things can actually be facilitated and strengthened more if we involve community partners in the education right from the beginning. We shouldn't really wait for a capstone course like one, one of our courses. Even if we have invited speakers coming in right from the beginning, it can be really inspiring and motivating for a lot of our students to, to learn a lot of things. Now, so the basic philosophy of this course is that we offer culminating opportunity for our students to put in practice whatever, whatever they have learned throughout their BHSE degree and also gain a lot of transferable skills. One thing which is extremely important for us as a course is we really, really encourage our students to be more reflective. You know, we, it, the focus is on their experiential learning. They need to pause after you know, every few days and think about what's happening, why it's happening, where they are gr growing, you know, what's, what, what exactly is they're learning. And we link all of that in their assessments as well. So these are the type of assessments we use. Uh, in total, we use four time points uh, in this course, two before mid-semester break and two after mid-semester break. And the, the assignments are things like blogs, reports, career profile video. And a lot of these students, they haven't actually done any of these things in the BHSC degree in the past. So when they come to year three, they're doing this paper. This is the very first paper where they have to write a blog as an assignment. And one of the first basic questions, I remember asking myself, why the hell do they need to write a blog? I mean, you know, this is the common thing. People say, well, I'm not a blogger. I'm not super uh, active on, you know, these uh, social networking sites. And I don't write blogs. So why do I need to write blogs? So fundamentally, it's extremely, extremely important. I think this is what Kevin was saying in the morning that you know, as a teacher, we need to embody the graduate profile. So to very clearly outline and explain them that why it is so important for you. It is actually for your growth and how exactly it's going to help you to grow. It's not only about the assessment. So we explain all these things in the series of seminars we run. We have got different seminars, and I'll not be going in the seminars today because the focus is slightly on the assessment part of it. But to give you an example, we have created, uh, by the way, I, I should thank the LTU unit from the Faculty of F F Medical and Health Sciences for supporting us in creating uh, these series of online modules for our students and for our placement supervisors. So I think there's a huge amount of support available at least in the FMHS for sure. And I think people are very, very helpful. I remember uh, approaching media productions uh, to collaborate with them. And everybody is super friendly. And we don't really have to pay anything for any of these services, which is brilliant. So all of this was free. And it was through the assistance of a lot of people within the faculty and the university as well. So we have created these series of videos which are focused around their assignments, which basically explains them that why exactly they need to do something how exactly it's going to help for their learning, and what exactly they need to do to do a good job. For example, if they have to write a blog about treaty or about ethical practice, they, don't they have a word limit of 800 words. So they don't need, really need to write about you know, when was treaty signed, what are the different versions, what are the principles. We are not interested in that. 
What we are interested in, we have created this acronym called IRLR. I is an incidence or an issue. So they need to very briefly describe an incidence or an issue within their experience during their placement, you know, which is linked with treating. Once they have described that, they need to talk about why it's relevant to their organization and for you as a student. Why, why is it relevant to me as a student? Next step is learning. What have I learned from that incidence and uh, while talking about the relevance to the organization and to myself? And once they have specifically outlined their learning, then the last step is they need to talk about resources. What are the things which they can do to grow further, to take, a, to, to take their learning to a notch higher? So th that's the structure of one of their assignment. And we provide them these guidelines and support. During the seminars we run, we also do some exercises where we provide them, say, a very good quality of blog and a terrible quality of blog. And we let them discuss it in, in, in pairs, in small little groups, and as a class. So they all brainstorm and they, they all talk about, OK, this is the something which I don't really like it. This is something which is done really, really well. So towards the end of that session, basically, most of the points are actually covered by the class itself. They are the one who come forward and they are the one who share that this is what I have learned from this. This is something which is good, which we need to keep in mind while we are working on our assignment. This is something which we should avoid. Obviously, there will always be exceptions that you know, there are students who still do those uh, you know, things which you know, they discuss in the class that this is a big no-no. You might still see one or two students doing it. But we have seen this change that on the whole, the class has sort of shifted. With semesters, we have seen that change. Less and less number of students doing those sort of basic errors, actually. So that's what happens in the seminar, and which is linked with the assignment and graduate profile. So these are the four assignments which are planned for them. The first one is an organizational report and placement plan. This is a report, 1,500 words. They write it about the organization where they are placed. They need to demonstrate to us that they understand that organization really well, the structure of the organization, how does the organization functions, and then critically analyze it from the health system's perspective in the first assignment. Second one is a blog about a treaty or ethical practice. Third one, professional development plan. It involves two components. One is a blog which they need to write about one of the graduate profile skills. They need to pick any skill from the university's graduate profile, and based on that skill, they need to write their blog. And again, it involves all those steps. They describe it, they, they do their self-evaluations, they talk about where they are standing, how they can grow, what are the resources which can help them grow further. Another component of this assignment is a career profile video which is like a one minute video they shoot at the media productions, where of course they have one minute to, to talk about the knowledge, skills and abilities they have gained through their placement and the degree as a whole. And that is a very, very good practice for them. It's almost like an elevator pitch. That you know, whenever they're in a situation, they have to talk to someone, they can easily strike that conversation with the person. And I'll just give you a quick example of uh, one of the assignment as well. Of course, after taking permission from the student, here it is. Hi, my name is Anel Prince, and I'm on my way to completing a Bachelor of Health Sciences at the University of Auckland, which I hope to complete by the end of 2017. My goal for a future career involves using my skills and knowledge to analyze health policy. I want to shape a political landscape that better reflects the diversity of our population. Through my degree, I've learned how to apply both theory and creativity to offer solutions to health problems. Being able to access information from a range of databases has helped me develop a critical thinking approach. My placement at the Positive Aging Network gave me an opportunity to deliver a presentation where I could work on my communication skills. This placement and my experience as a volunteer worker with Geneva Healthcare has sparked my motivation to use policy to defend the rights of all people. So I am both nervous and excited to begin my career as a health professional as I turn my passion for equality into a reality. Thank you. So all the students, they prepare assignment like this, which is um, to support them. What we do is we run a media production workshop you for them. This is one of the videos about the assignment. So. Um, 
what we do is one of the workshop which is about media production is uh, we we give plenty of opportunity to all these students to actually practice their their elevator pitch the one minute career profile script and we give them a lot of feedback as well so the feedback is given by the students in a small group in a whole class and if they specifically if somebody is really courageous they want a feedback from say richard smith who is running the workshop or from us we are very willing to do that feedback as well so it's it's a great opportunity for a lot of them to actually learn and grow and i must say this to you all of you that whenever when we do the inductions of this courses and within roughly 3 4 months time it's really remarkable to see the confidence and the change in a lot of our students and because they they are doing this placement outside and we have seen that in the past 3 year on an average every semester we have at least 3 to 5 students who are actually hired by these organization as well they may not get permanent roles but they, some some of, some of them have received say one year contract six month contract or part time jobs and things like that which is really really good and because um, the, the organization are being very kind to offer this you know support to our, our university and our course and a partner partnering with us without getting paid at all so it's basically purely goodwill relationship and they most of them experience this really nice relationship with our students and they get a lot of things done as well so students get a learning opportunity the organization get a lot of things done so it's like a win win situation however we have to be really really careful about because of course we have this course we have these marking and we have these assignment everything planned so we need to kind of work with all those supervisors very closely to understand that they understand everything which is running in the course and for that we have created again an online module which is sort of sent to the students which has series of videos very short videos 2 to 3 minute videos orienting them about the course about various assignments about their roles and responsibilities about the roles and responsibilities of the student teaching team so that makes life a little bit easier for them and obviously uh, my my job is of course to sort of pay them personal visits as well meet them talk to them on the phone emails and all that as well so it's 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 really rewarding for me to be in that position where you you're dealing with the students at the same time you're dealing with the community and then you're sort of working with parallelly with both of them through this course and finally the fourth assignment is about a report which they write which is about the substantial piece of work they do at the organization so all students are supposed to work on a little project at the organization and this last assignment is about where they write a big 2500 words report about how exactly they carried out that project what were the results discussions and it's almost like a research paper all the four assignments here and then i was looking at the graduate profile and i thought how uh, it'll be a good exercise to try and map how the assignments are linked with some of these things so to simplify it these are the themes some of the important bullet points which come under these themes and here are the assignments now the interesting thing about this particular course is we have placement placement in itself is a huge learning opportunity and it covers a lot of these things things like uh, disciplinary knowledge uh, critical thinking solution seeking communication and engagement and all that stuff but also with respect to our assignments we have uh, some of them which are more dedicated towards one of these than the others for example the disciplinary knowledge and practice the assignment 1 and 4 which are the reports you know they need to demonstrate to us that they understand the organization really well and critique it so that sort of covers that point um communication and engagement the the career profile video which they do that's a very good example of their communication skills and of course through the placement they are engaging not only with their supervisor but also with the team there as well social and environmental responsibilities when they talk about the treaty when they talk about cultural competence when they talk about ethical practice that sort of covers some of these points here so to sum it up i think um the placement on its own also these series of assessments which we have planned for them more or less touch upon most of these things which i mentioned the career profile um of the university this is little positive thing here in 2017 semester 1 and semester 2 we are doing 
we are definitely out of that red, fl red flag zone, so I don't have to go and have that meeting. But, uh, and I think we're doing relatively well in terms of this, the academic unit, the faculty, and the university. But having said that, as I said, we are still in the process of growing and developing, and the student numbers changes massively. We need to seek out more placements, and you are not only addressing the student needs, but you're also dealing with the supervisor's need. So it's extremely important to sort of be mindful of all these things, and it keeps us on our toes all the time. And uh, this overall satisfaction has sort of gone up compared to the previous years. And uh, before I finish, I think the important message which I want to give is, uh, I think not every course may have a placement component, but that doesn't mean that the assignments, the way we plan them, had to be linked with the placement only. I mean, the, the, there are so many other important things to consider when we are planning the assignments. And I think the business school is doing a really amazing job. It was so good to see um, the sort of innovative assignments you guys use. And I'm sure going back, I think we will, uh, I'm going to have a meeting and rethink about the, the things which we do and how we can bring in more innovative things in, in our practice as well. So thank you so much for your time and really appreciate it. Questions? I think that's too big for you. No, I, I, I acknowledge that. I think this is a very relevant question. That's the sort of question which uh, we need to discuss in each schools, you know, and each faculty, you know, it's really, really important. And I think in our faculty, uh, in, our, in our school, School of Population Health, I remember having these um, meetings. Bridget, feel free to add it if you want to. And there, um, you know, all the teaching staff of various courses, year one, year two, year three, you sit together, you talk about, try and map the curriculum and see who is doing what and what sort of things can be adjusted here and there. So there was a time, I remember, where 302 was the course where the students will come and for the very first time do a pre oral presentation. That has now changed. Even year one um, courses have now started to incorporate oral presentation components. A uh, year two have now started incorporating the report writing and things like that. So slowly and steadily things are changing in our school for sure. But I think to answer that question, the best approach could be to bring the school together Everybody be um, very um, open to talk about things and be willing to change their things as well. I think that's the best way you can work together as a team and that's the best way we can address student learning needs as well. Yeah, Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for that question. Yes, Mary.
So I, I think that that's again a brilliant question and uh, probably um, it's sort of beyond me. But what we do at, the, at our level, what happens is uh, the students, when they work on these assessments, all of their assessments, they, they also consult with their primary supervisor who is based within the community. So they sort of have an interaction, they get feedback from them and they get inputs from them and they sort of keep that in mind and then they do the final submission to us. So that's what happens at informally at, uh, at, this, at our course level. I sort of like the idea of what you're proposing of formally involving them. I think, but that will also depend um, um, on you know, who, who those people are, what sort of involvement we are looking at, that sort of, that it requires conversation at the level of, uh, I think, uh, the course and, and the school and the faculty and of course the university, I think. Anyone else has any comment on that? Want to add in to what Mary asked? Yes, Jenny. Fair enough. And I think uh, one thing which I've been hearing repeatedly from the uh, from these uh, supervisors is that uh, a lot of them, a lot of people are really keen to be involved. And I think we shouldn't really wait for a capstone paper or a year three paper to actually, for the very first time, bring them in. It'll be really nice to have you know invited speakers right from throughout the education, like you know throughout the university education. Yes, Angela. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> uh, if I can just hold you up for uh, two or three more minutes. Uh, to draw your attention, this was outside on the board as well. This is a seminar series that the uh, school is going to be running um, over a period of Thank you. 